This year's Bible Conference CD is entitled Promises. We've taken several promises that are mentioned in the scriptures and we've highlighted those in song. And there are seven different subcategories of these titles, each one highlighting a different aspect of God's promises to his children. We start with choosing the songs first, which usually just lays out the framework of the project where we go through all the, the, the 15 tracks that we want to put on a recording. And at the very end of the project, where after we've recorded the choir and the orchestra and done all the paperwork that comes behind it, we choose the title, which sounds backwards, but it's really not. Because at the very end of the project really comes the fun part, because you can look at the text and see all the neat things that happen in those, in those words. It's hard to put those songs in a proper order. It's really easy to find two or three that work well for musical reasons and put them together because they're slow, fast, slow but then we'll get to some other part in the track order and discover that now we have four songs in a row in G minor that all talk about the same thing. So it's hard to pace the music right and the theme right, so there's variety and yet flow and unity. But this order worked pretty well. We tried to start with the joys of salvation, um, the song of joy, and we ended with the promise of heaven. And we hit the high peak on the way of pardon of redemption, salvation. Recording is great. It's, it's fun being around that many singers who are trained to adjust that well and change their tone and change their line shape and blend and darken and they're fabulous to have there bringing music to life. Trying to draw out of the music textual meanings that the composer has overlaid with a very fine score and we usually find a blessing in the process. With the voice of joy, I will praise the Lord, my song in the night. One of my favorite things about recording is how Dr. Cook a lot of times goes back to certain phrases. Um, he knows that we could emphasize the text more, and he talks about the text and um, what it should mean to us, what it means to him and we go back and sing it again and you can tell that we've thought about it and that it's more personal. He tried to do it with a gesture, not talk to you about it, but you can't say try to oh, oh, it's already in there. <laughs> this year we used 16 singers, four on a part, and in the process we sing the song through one time with the 16 singers. If it sounds like we want it, we do it two more times, so we have a choir of 48 singers. And then after Christmas, we start laying down the orchestra tracks, and not even the orchestra comes at the same time. They all come in, the strings just come in one day, or the brass, or um, just the percussion. I mean, there's just so many different groups of people that come at different times. It's one of our great privileges to work with Gary Emery at Brightwater Digital. He has many, many years of recording experience. Working with Dan is a great pleasure. He's a fine musician and he, he hears well and he writes well and he understands how to put together a um, composition that highlights the text. It's a great privilege to work with Rick Nichols who heads up Soundforth. He is a wonderful symphonic musician. He's a conductor, he's a composer, arranger, and he brings to this purpose and vision. So it's a great privilege to have him on this team. We have included a, a piece by our friends at Majesty Music, which I'm very glad that it's higher ground. It feels very martial, and uh, it has great moments to sing loudly, and I think it'll be a stirring addition to the CD. Wayfaring Stranger is a piece on the recording that provides some variety musically. It's an early American tune and text. It's in a minor key, which is out of, out of the box we're normally in. Um, it's written by one of my grad students, John Hudson, um, who scored it, I think, for a mission team a while back. It speaks really well of our experience sojourning here on earth as strangers. Um, he scored it, and it was a pleasure to work with him on the orchestration of it as well. Um, he pulls together the guitar and strings, um, solo strings, um, together in a way that just worked really well. He was able to bring some of his ideas to the table and I was able to tweak them in some ways that I thought would work better. And it was a good experience working together and I think that track came out really well. We have another new song on the CD that, that our students will recognize. We sing it in chapel occasionally. 
His Robes for Mine, and Dan orchestrated it wonderfully. It's a Chris Anderson, Greg Habegger collaboration. It describes the exchange that takes place between a sinner's filthy garments, filthy rags, and Christ's righteousness. One of my favorite lines in there is, He as though I, accursed and left alone, I as though he embraced and welcomed home, I have nothing that I can offer anyone. Instead, I have the righteousness of Christ placed on me. One of my favorite pieces is Oh God My Joy. It's a new composition by Paul Q with some collaboration um, with Brian Pinner and arranged by Molly Imes. And it talks about God being my joy in my living. And one of the stanzas begins, uh, I am sustained by this joy and I am compelled by this joy to live the Christian life. And we know that Christ himself, for the joy set before him, endured the cross. And that is a great way to live the Christian life with joy in mind. My favorite piece to record was None Like You. Um, the idea in the text that God is so great and majestic. It says, creator of the moon and stars, of mountains reaching high, creator of the galaxies. Those things are all so great. But then it says that he hears a baby's cry at the end of that phrase. And that makes God personal and loving. I think my favorite piece is Dan Forrest's Good Shepherd. When I listen to that song, I cry, so I had to stop listening to it. <laughs> um, I love it. it. I think it's the simple beauty of God's leading in my life and that I trust Him with not just the hope I have in heaven and the, and the, the major things of a believer's life, eternal security, but I trust Him with my daily fears, my daily doubts, the things that bother me the most are the things that I bring to Him. And when I pray, I know that I'm leaving them with Him. And this song is probably the best portrayal of that truth and that promise in my life. One thing that's unique with God and His promises to His children is that these promises will never be broken. From human standpoint, we can break promises to each other. But as we think about God and what He has promised in His Word, these promises will never be broken.